My name is Truman Hardy and I am a poet. The first time I actually started writing poetry is when I fell in love. I just had to write a poem. Most of my poetry is still quite personal. Being a poet is all about having a particular point of view. You have to have that point of view beforehand, then you are able to write poetry because it's all about seeing things in a fresh way and expressing them in a fresh way. I read some poems and I just think, my God, what an amazing thing this poet has done with language. It's just so refreshing. My brother gave me an example once. For a normal person who crosses the bridge to see a friend, um, the bridge is just a means to an end, to see the friend. Whereas for the poet, although he crosses the bridge to see a friend, the, crossing the bridge itself is an end in itself. It's a process which is taken notice of and absorbed and, you know, seen from a fresh point of view. I am Kurdish from southern Kurdistan, north of Iraq. My mother tongue is Kurdish. As a Middle Eastern woman who comes to Europe, not comes to England in particular, speaking no English, and I came when I was 19, um, in 93. Um, I came without speaking a word, not being familiar with this culture. You know, Middle Eastern culture is very different. Um, many people, many actually creative people, when, they, when this transformation happens, when the environment changes, when uh, the people around you change, uh, language changes, what matters changes, the standards, the values change, then some people just, you know, break down. I mean, not break down as in, break down in living, just as, as creative people, they kind of, stop creating that fear of not being able to do anything anymore. It's a shattering experience. It's an organization which is working for and with exiled writers. Some of them are, well, the majority are refugee writers. Some of them are immigrants. We have poets from Far East, Middle East, Africa, Latin America, Eastern Europe, you know, you name it, whatever other language other than English. And um, we have over a hundred writers. Next month, the first Monday of August, we're going, the first half of the evening, we're going to have an Algerian night. We're going to have a poet, a bit of uh, music and a bit of art. So do come back. Secondly, whoever wants to become a member and isn't already, you only have to pay five pounds and give us your name and details and number and all of that and we will send you information. Don't go away, come back, we have an open mic reading. Whoever's here is welcome to read. Thanks. We have writers who freshly come from their countries, they're struggling with their English, they need a translator to help them to translate their poetry. And we have writers who've been here many years and they already write in English and you know they they've they've you know, they have no problem with language, they've settled down. But the fact is, they're still not represented very well. We have these discussions about what we have perceived to be and what we see ourselves as. And we all agree in one point, and that is, exiled literature does not have to be about exile. A refugee writer, refugee writing does not have to be about being a refugee. You know, it's written by a refugee. And that's a totally different point, and people confuse the two. We don't get together for counselling and say, oh yes, I was in prison, I was tortured. We are getting together as good writers, good established published writers, who have difficulties in this country because of language barriers, because of not having any contacts, not being able to enter the mainstream publications. This is a platform for us. Once at the beginning of Exiled Writers Inc. meetings, they said that the theme of next month is going to be memories and back home. And um, I wasn't able to write anything. I mean, ages later, I was able to write a poem about that. There is a place where you can smell the satisfaction of the land when the first rain falls and you can hear the fat raindrops. There is a place where it doesn't rain continuously, where you can sleep on the flat roofs on the hot evenings, and it snows to let you know that another winter has arrived. Most people think writing poetry is quite therapeutic, you know, um, just as you go to a counsellor to talk and understand why you're feeling the way you're feeling, why you're thinking the way you're thinking. Poetry can do the same thing. You could actually, there's a lot bottled up sometimes inside you. And once you are able to write it, the moment crystallizes, you actually 
you know, let go of that moment there and you understand it and you can move on. But I don't think that's, you know, I don't write poetry for that reason because obviously if that's the case then I could go to a counsellor. I write poetry because it's wonderful, because I love it, because it's lovely to read. There is a house with four bedrooms where a couple live with their three children. One is seven years old and the other two are three. There was a house with four bedrooms where seven people used to live and they ate around a flowery souffre every day. Home, how I left it, you know, this big house full of these rooms, full of people, you know, unmarried siblings yet, um, who we all shared the same, you know, um, we lived together, ate together, everything. Now, after all these years, everybody's married, everybody's got their children, our house is destroyed, you know, the school is not there anymore, um, you know, my parents are not the same. So, although you long for something and you remember home with these strong images of how it was, you know very well, even if you go back, it's never going to be the same. There was a place before the marriages taking place before the mountains attracting the men, before buying one-way tickets. There was a place where seven people lived happily in the Four Seasons, and a little girl who kept dreaming of chicks, goats and rabbits. I think it's, uh, it just expresses this longing, longing for some something beautiful, precious, which probably you didn't realize it was beautiful and precious until it wasn't there anymore, you know. And I think it's nothing extraordinary. Most of us have something which, some part, some history, some period in our lives, which, which was great and it has gone and we have accepted it, but we still long for it. It's, a, it's, it's just an expression of longing, which I'm sure many people can share. As a Kurdish person in exile, it's very difficult to distribute your books to the Kurdish population in Europe. So what I had to do is I had to go to all these different capitals in Europe where there are big Kurdish communities and give poetry readings. Obviously, I arranged it with other women as well at the same time as an exhibition music that was going on. Um, and it did actually work because people listen to the poem and if they like it, then they will take the book away with them and they will read it. Every time you read your poems, it's recreating them for people and the responses emphasize my feelings. Tonight we have five amazing women from five different corners of the world. The first person is a Kurdish poet and writer and she's published two collections of her poetry. Return with no memory and light of the shadows. And she has been anthologized widely. So please put your hands together for Choman Hadi. Thank you. There is a place where you can smell the satisfaction of the land when the first rain falls and you can hear the fat raindrops. There is a place where it doesn't rain continuously where you can sleep on the flat roofs on the hot evenings and it snows to let you know that another winter has arrived. There is a house with four bedrooms where a couple live with their three children. One is seven years old and the other two are three. There was a house with four bedrooms where seven people used to live and they ate around a flowery souffre every day. And the young man used to play his flute until the women would cry, maybe for what there was, or for what there would be. I think my poetry in itself, regardless of where I am from and whether I'm a refugee or not, if they are good, then that's what deserves attention. I need to publish a collection in English. I have faith in my poetry and I have faith that recently there's been more attention paid to multilingual poetry in, in Britain. I think the trend is going that way for us to be allowed into the mainstream 